Thank you very much, Jasmine, for that introduction. And good afternoon and welcome, everyone. It's an absolute privilege to be here this afternoon uh, to officially open the 2018 Singapore FinTech Festival Accelerator today. Just thought I'd take a, a moment or two just to share some reflections. It seemed like only yesterday that we were in this forum um, for last year's Accelerator program. But a lot has occurred over the last 12 months in global FinTech. Globally, we've seen FinTech investment levels reach $86 billion in US dollar terms in terms of deals across M&A, private equity, and venture capital transactions. Over 1,800 deals that have been successfully closed. To put that into context, that's 65% higher than what was achieved last year and is a significant uplift on the highest previous record of 62 billion in 2015. Corporates, some of whom are here, are participating much more heavily in the investment scene. We're now seeing around a quarter of all deals led by banks, insurers, asset managers, either directly or through their VC arms. From a regional perspective, Asia Pacific is also at a record level of investment, reaching 21 billion in investment over the last 12 months. And then if we look at the unicorns, the world now has 33 FinTech unicorns, eight of which are coming from our region. And finally, five of the top 10 fintech companies in the world are from Asia. However, fintech is more than numbers. In the last year, we've seen the introduction of PSD2 in Europe and open banking in the UK. And we've seen a number of other jurisdictions now making the move or announcing the move to opening up their banking systems, data, and APIs to the fintech community. And this has supported and will continue to support the application of a number of fintech market opportunities. But most importantly, it's going to deliver high levels of competition, but also putting customers back in control of their data. 2018 has also seen a number of leading fintech companies convert to become digital banks. We've seen that with Adyen, with Klarna, and Revolut. And we're also seeing a number of new digital banking startups emerge across the globe. Again, supported by policy settings and regulatory changes to facilitate their entry into the marketplace. Perhaps another noteworthy example is Wirecard, a fintech company from Bavaria. It's an online payments company now at 20 billion euro market capitalization. Interestingly, a few months ago, Wirecard has entered the prestigious DAX 30 of leading companies in Germany, having replaced one of the largest lenders in Germany, who was a foundation member of the DAX 30 and has been in the index for 30 years. And then closer to the region, obviously, Ant Financial with its UE Bao platform, which started around four years ago, is now the world's largest money market fund. Again, however, FinTech is more than just individual company success stories. It has a bigger, far more important role to play. Already this morning, I think we've heard some very powerful stories from Sakib, from Microsoft, and also from Ravi from the MAS about how financial innovation has brought real benefit to the area of financial inclusion and how fintech is bringing to the unserved and underserved the sort of financial products and services that all of us enjoy day to day and often take for granted. Another point around trust. In many parts of the world, the reputation of the financial services industry has not regained the level of trust the industry enjoyed before the global financial crisis. And in some jurisdictions, and it saddens me that one of them is Australia, my home market, it's worsened with misconduct issues now emerging. 
And of course, we all agree that the industry, whether it's financial services or fintech, will not thrive unless we have trust. So we need to address this growing trust deficit. Otherwise, it will continue to hold back the development of the financial services industry. And if we want growing economies, prosperous societies, we need financial services that is fair, efficient, and innovative. And so you'll hear from some reg tech and soup tech solutions today. And through the application of those capabilities, FinTech will play a role in the necessary rehabilitation of the industry. And these areas, that of financial inclusion and of restoring trust, underscore the profound impact that the FinTech movement can have and is having on the global and regional financial services landscape. Now, I spent a lot of time in Asia, and my former chairman of KPMG's global financial services practice would often describe Asia as a lens into the future, a global innovation lab for emerging trends and developments in financial services. And Singapore is a leading protagonist. To me, all of the qualities and characteristics that describe successful fintech companies are attributes that is underlying the success of fintech in Singapore on a global scale. I describe it through the three C's, courage, conviction, and connectivity. The courage to aspire to a bold future vision, the conviction to back it up with the necessary resources, investment, and importantly, the alignment of effort across the fintech ecosystem, which Ravi described earlier on. But more fundamentally, the connectivity, defining success not only through the activities that occur within the national boundaries, but rather extending beyond it to helping to facilitate and support the responsible innovation that's required for developing economies in the ASEAN region. And so for this, Ravi and Sapnendu and the team at the MES should be commended and congratulated. So to the fintech community that's here today, speaking from personal experience, having spent the last 12 months uh, getting a new fintech venture off the ground at, fintech, uh, sorry, at KPMG and also through my role on the board of Stone and Chalk, I know that innovation's not easy. It doesn't take just insight and vision. It takes a lot of tenacity, perseverance, and above all, a lot of hard work. And so I hope for all of the fintech entrepreneurs that are here who are involved in the innovation that you are not only getting the business benefit and the market opportunities from participating in the Hack Accelerator, but you're also getting the satisfaction that you've raised the game in financial services and will continue to do so. So what next? Well, today is all about what comes next. I'm really intrigued to see some of the fintech innovations over the course of the next few hours. To see these propositions and to work out which of these really have the potential to scale, to make a real difference in real economies, to deliver benefits to real people. And I know for all of our finalists that everyone in our audience is really looking forward to hearing what you have to say, and it's a great achievement for you all to be here today. As I mentioned, Singapore is well regarded as a global fintech hub. So in putting out the problem statements for the accelerator, we wanted to attract the best of global and the best of local. So we used KPMG's global innovation sourcing platform called Matchy to ensure that we promoted these problem statements far and wide. In May, we released 80 problem statements collated from financial institutions highlighting common pain points and potential areas where fintech companies have capabilities to solve across the ASEAN region. We focused on four categories, regtech and subtech, insurtech, financial inclusion, and a general category. And I'm pleased to say that we had over 300 applications from 30 countries, more than 50% of which were from outside of Asia. KPMG worked with the MAS to convene a panel of 35 industry experts to evaluate the applications. 20 finalists were selected, you'll hear from them today, 
and they all went through an intensive 12-week program where the teams received mentoring and guidance of assigned corporate champions. They participated in a range of different capability um, development exercises to help not necessarily convert their capabilities so they're market ready, because many of them are already in market, but to help refine their propositions for the ASEAN market. The teams then convene in Singapore midway through the program to further have feedback sessions from the champions as well as KPMG, Singapore's digital village. They participated in legal clinics and speaker series which included uh, how to raise capital and how to effectively partner with corporates. So it's an absolute great achievement for all of those 20 fintech companies to be here today. I hope all of the finalists really enjoy themselves. I'm looking forward to seeing what the best of you have got to offer, and I wish you finally the best of luck for today. Thank you.